welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. I'm really excited for today's project. We are going to be doing another linen outfit I guess. So in a previous video I made a beautiful dress out of a bunch of linens and I'm looking to kind of repeat that process but this time I want it to be separate. So let's talk pattern first. My first pattern is going to be this one again. This is one of the Lady Marlowe patterns and it has all the ruffles. This time I think I plan on only going five long, keeping it just a little bit shorter, a little bit more mobile. And this time I'm gonna make a skirt instead of a dress. The only worry about this is with a dress I was able to put in a waist stay that would hold the weight of the linens because this gets really heavy really quick. But I think it will be okay because this is not my first time doing this, so I'm hoping it won't be too bad. Now my second pattern is where things are gonna very much deviate from the first. I have this dress pattern here and I know what you're thinking. I thought you said you're making a skirt. I am making a skirt and what I wanna do is I really like the cut of this blouse or not this blouse, this top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this dress top and I am going to like pattern, cut it, manipulate it, whatever into a blouse. So that's gonna include taking the waist to be quite a bit wider and then I'll have a zipper down the back and the idea will be it tucks in with this guy to hopefully look like a dress but then I have these two pieces I can wear separately. The other thing I have to do to pattern hack this is I, this, these are three quarter sleeves and I would like them to be full length. So I'm gonna have to lengthen the sleeve by a bit. Which last time I did this, this did not go so well. My plan is the way this process works, I have to have a lawn lining. My plan is to do basting and make up a whole lawn lining to check for fit issues. And then once I have done that, I will take it all apart and start the process. So I will show you, of course, the process of the skirt, but the main highlight of this video will be the dress because the skirt will not be too different from the last time I made a skirt from these. And my materials, in case you don't know what I mean by vintage linens, I have this whole stack of white and cream vintage linens, some I've picked up recently, some I've had in my stash. All of them are cute and I'm pretty excited to use them. I've been kind of stewing on this ever since I completed my linen dress and that turned out so successfully that I've been thinking about other ways I can kind of use that process to make garments that are gonna be super useful for me. And the biggest thing I wish from that dress is that it with separates. So we're gonna make some separate. I just want a little bit of a shorter skirt because that feels a little bit more feasible for my life. Buki, are you gonna say hi? There she is, the queen. Let's go ahead to hop into me starting the construction on the skirt. For this, I need to first cut out my cotton lawn base, which is what I'm doing here. I am cutting with an additional half inch seam line. This will be the lining that will hold the ruffles. It is also at this point where I will mark it. Marking these is incredibly important. It has these long lines that go all the way around the garment to know where to stitch a ruffle to, so it is really important to take the time to mark these really, really well. I have constructed this skirt off camera because I did it on camera in my last video like this. So here I'm just showing you me attaching the zipper now. I am attaching the zipper now because this is a skirt and I know it will be easier for me to like hand stitch my ruffles down here as opposed to figuring out how to put the zipper in with the ruffles on. This is a, I guess, mistake you could call it that I learned from on my last garment like this. So I wanted to make sure to do it in a neater way this time. Time. And with the base done, it is time for me to sort the linens. I am sorting these linens into four categories. There are like pillowcases or things that just have bottom ruffles. And then I have pillowcases that don't have any bottom ruffle. And then I have things that are like linens that have lace all the way around the whole thing. And then I guess technically I have one last pile that's back behind me, which is all the doilies. This just helps me know exactly what I have to work with. Once I had these sorted, I started to go ahead and pre-cut things, but then I realized that wasn't quite what I wanted to do so I stopped and instead I sorted these into piles of which I think will have the best layering effect. I want to make sure to have pink through all the ruffles on this skirt and it's really important to think about how the colors in the different layers of the ruffles are going to be dispersed otherwise you get something that looks really chaotic and it doesn't seem to have like a ton of thought behind it. After sorting those into piles, I'm now starting to play with what will go on what level of ruffle. Spookies, of course, coming to help me out. So I'm just basically laying things out 
and seeing how they look across all five ruffles. And once I like how it looks, I will stop and then start to actually cut the sheets and linens so that way they are ready for me to start experimenting with how they're gonna go on the ruffle. I am starting down at my biggest ruffle because I know it will take the most amount of linens, so I'm arranging that first. The way I arrange these is I have the front either at the very back or at the very front alternating, so that way there's some method to the madness. It's really important when you make these to have some sort of symmetry and pattern otherwise again they just get really really chaotic looking and it doesn't feel like the eye can rest anywhere or is directed anywhere because they aren't done with intention it's much like doing a collage so here I am just really playing with the linens to figure out what I'm doing and once I have that done I will pin it and then quilt it later which I'll show you that process but before then I'm going to move up to the next ruffle this is the fourth ruffle down so it can be a little bit different and again I'm just laying things out and playing and trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing and I'm doing that again on this ruffle I feel like these really show you what I mean by alternating every other of whether the middle piece is on top or on bottom the first one the middle piece was on bottom this one it's on bottom but the last one I did was on the front so hopefully that makes sense and then again once I get those pinned down I'm just piling it in to my sewing and then when laying out the bits for the back I'm just making sure it looks similar to the front but I don't need to have like the standout pieces on the back the way I do the front like the umbrellas aren't going to carry over to the back and things like that and while I continue to arrange and play I just want to remind you that I do have a ko-fi where you can go over and buy me a coffee if you desire this just helps out my channel as I devote a lot of time and labor and a lot of love I enjoy doing this but it is of course always exciting when someone buys me a coffee so that will be below in the description. And we're almost done. I have made it up to the tippity top of my ruffle. This is the very top. As you can see, it's a lot thinner than the others. But once I wrap that up, I will start to show you the like quilting and sewing process. The last thing is to do the back of the skirt. I wanted to make sure I show you the back because what you're seeing is me laying panels that will work to have the zipper. These will be open in the middle because I have a middle zipper. I thought about doing a side zipper, but then I realized it would put the same issue on the side and I would really much prefer it to be in the back. So you'll see what I mean by this later, especially in the reveal, but what this does is it gives me ruffles over my zipper so that way I can have it separate. With everything arranged and pinned, it is time to sew it down. What I am doing here is I am top stitching around the top layers of each piece and then that will have it sewn down the first time. And from there, what you see me doing here is I am actually cutting out where all the overlap is. On the last dress I made, I didn't do this and I just felt like it was so, so heavy. So I'm trying to get rid of some of the bulk by having very little overlap between the two. And then once I have that cut down, I'm going to turn over each edge twice so that way I also have finished edges under there. Then I will press those and go back to my machine to top stitch them down. The top stitching catches that double turn hem underneath so that way I have all clean seams but I have no real overlap in fabric and this definitely made the skirt significantly lighter than the dress I made was. And with all of these now quilted, I can cut them into the correct shape. I'm leaving a little bit at the ends because I did add a half inch on each side into my adjustment for the skirt itself because I wanted this to be nice and comfy. Since it is rather heavy, it's important not also be too tight. Otherwise, I'm cutting it down like normal. And for the ones with the zipper, I am just laying these down with them side by side at the center. Also, one of the things you did see me is I am marking the center for each of these so that way they don't get disjointed at any point in time. It's really easy to get pretty turned around in a project like this, so little markings and notches and things will keep you really organized. And the last thing I need to do here is mark the pleating that I'm doing. This helps give the skirt like an ease into all the ruffles, if that makes sense visually. I am going to show you how I actually sewed together the ruffles in a little, but here I wanted to show what it looks like when I actually am attaching them to the garment. I am literally using the machine as my base so that way I have a backing that I can't pin through and then I am pinning each ruffle to the line marking I have made on the underskirt and so far everything is turning out as planned and I am quite pleased. 
once that's pinned, I have already stitched it down, just a simple top stitch, and then I am, again, trying to finish off all my raw seams. So I'm re-going over that with some rayon binding tape to make sure none of my raw edges are out. This just makes things more washable, so I prefer to do that. All right, good morning. It is about 10 o'clock. I'm getting ready to dive into sewing. I am, I think, a little over eight hours deep on this project, and I did have to put it on pause for a little bit because I had a really bad spurt of back pain that made me not able to sew, but now I'm recovered, and so I'm sewing. I mean, I guess clearly I'm recovered because I'm sewing again, but yeah, just a reminder that take care of your body, and if your body says you need a break, take a break. I was doing a lot of yoga and lacrosse balling. It's actually interesting. My back spasms have moved in location which is not my fave. Typically they're fairly lower back, but right now they've moved into my upper back pretty bad. I still get the lower back symptoms, but the uh, upper back is what's really causing my pain right now, which is not ideal because that also then makes me, makes it harder for me to work, like do my job because handling anything laptop-y happens more in my upper back. So that's been not great, but we're through, I think, the worst of it. I'll probably sew a little bit less today just because I want to pace myself so that way my back doesn't reflare. But this is what I have done. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I have tried it on. It's really cute. It's really comfy. The last step I have for this guy is I just need to put on the top ruffle, which is what'll cover this, and then eventually the waistband. But I think I'm not going to do the waistband till towards the end because I think that I'm going to make the waistband with a bunch of scraps. So I think it's more ideal to complete the shirt as well first I think so today yeah we'll finish this up the top band and then I'll start in earnest on the shirt so basically my plan for that is I'm gonna have to draft my own pattern sort of or like alter the pattern that I'm working with heavily so that'll be interesting and then my plan is to cut out the lawn based all of the lawn together at the key points to check fit once fit is checked and good to go then i'll go into sewing the whole thing we're gonna go ahead and hop into the sewing this morning i'm starting out by sewing together my final ruffle which is the top one here i am just sewing a normal half inch or five eighths of an inch seam i can't remember which one this project was and then after pressing them open, I'm cutting one side down, but first I am cutting any additional layers of lace out to make sure to lighten the seams. And then I will cut one half of one down and wrap the other around it, making kind of a fake felled seam. And then I will stitch that down. It does leave stitching on the other side, but I think it is well worth the fact that I have completely clean and non-frayy seams. So that way when I wash this garment eventually it will all be okay. And now it's time for me to pleat it. I first started by doing an ironing pleat and I realized these were much too like firm of pleats for this type of garment so I didn't iron any of the rest of the pleats and I ended up actually ironing the initial plate pleat I ironed into it back out of it because I just didn't look right with the really hard pleating. And then this one I am pinning around the top and it of course has that gap in the back where the zipper is. I did just use a basting stitch for this one because eventually the waistband will completely enclose it and I, there's no reason to have two lines of stitching there. So I wanted this to just be a basting stitch. Now we can move on to my pattern alterations. I don't actually really necessarily know what I'm doing here. I've of course watched a lot of the Closet Historians videos around patterning, and I have also taken some patterning classes, so I do, I guess, kind of know what I'm doing here, but a lot of it was guesswork because I was trying to figure out how to get this to be more of a shirt bodice and less of a dress bodice. But first, of course, I am marking all of my different darts and dots and little cut things I'm forgetting the name of notches notches and then once I finish that I will continue the alteration of this pattern I went and measured a shirt that I like the length of and then I dropped down the line from the armpit just straight down not actually going inward like it would for a bodice I will still put in the darts that will give the bodice more shape but I don't need the like side lines themselves to give it more shape because I need this to drop down to just above my hips for it to fit correctly and I made similar alterations to the back dropping it down the exact same amount but this time I am adding in an extra half inch seam so that way I can put a zipper straight down the back 
since the side zip isn't really what I want for this blouse and I need something that I can get my head through. The last thing I need to do is lengthen the sleeves since this is a three quarter inch sleeve in the pattern and I want it to be a full length sleeve. So I know I need to drop it by about six inches. So first I am going to trace the pattern out and then I am going to cut it along the lengthen line and move it down six inches. And then I will be re-taping some of this tracing paper under it. With this, I have finally finished off my tracing paper, which is kind of fun. Since this is tracing paper, I've had since I've graduated college, so now I get to start fresh. And now it's time to cut it out on this cotton lawn. This time the cotton lawn will completely like back everything because with this being a shirt, I don't really want anything but this lining touching me because the linens can kind of vary in texture and I would find that annoying. So it is better to just have a lining in the bodice that is all one texture. I am then real quick gonna sew this up using all basting stitches off camera and check in with you guys to to see how well my pattern drafting rigging thing worked. All right, I am here. I'm in my, this is the final fabric, but this is the mock-up. I haven't quilted it. Ignore all the weird tucks around here. I did this in a very lazy way. And then also this will be a little bit further down my neck because it will have a facing. Um, but otherwise this is the mock-up. Hopefully you can see that it looks pretty darn good. So the biggest things I was checking up with this mock-up is, is the sleeve link correct? Which it is, big thumbs up here. And then does it fit me well here? Like, does it feel comfortable? Can I do this? Do the pleats and the darts and all that lay right? It's looking really, really good. And I also like where the length is hitting because it'll be something I can tuck into a skirt. Or honestly, I think I'll be able to wear it just plain with like jeans as if I do that, leggings, I don't know. But I think I'll also be able to wear it untucked is what I'm stating here. So I'm pretty excited. So now we're gonna go into the, the fun creative part. I'm gonna unpick all of this and then we're gonna start laying all our different quilting pieces and I'm really excited. So yeah, I'm gonna first stop for lunch, eat lunch, unpick everything. This is like the most shoddy sewing of my life. I did this in a half hour. Eat, unpick, and then we're gonna get back to our quilting. After finishing my lunch, I'm unpicking all the se seams I made for this mock-up. They were all basted, so that is fairly easy and straightforward. And now it's time to figure out the laying out game again. This time, I know I want the kittens front and center in this project, so I know I want it on that yoke piece, and then I'm just trying to figure out how these little flower curvy things fit into that. Overall, the fitting of these onto a shirt just takes me a little bit more time because I'm less practiced at it than the ruffles. I had a good routine going with my ruffles, but I'm trying to figure out how to have a straightforward layout for a top. So I am just moving and playing and adjusting and seeing where I can get it. I am finally happy with where it's landed, so I am pinning it all down. And then after quilting that down, I am cutting it back to the pattern. I want to do this now because I know I'm going to use some of these things on the back bodice pattern. I have primed the yoke to be pressed so that way it is easy to pin down to this piece here. And checking on this, this is looking so darn cute. And I'm also just checking that that aligns with the back piece because when I made my mock-up, the back piece didn't align quite right. But I had, of course, done a pretty sloppy job when sewing that together. So now they all align and all the marks make sense. I decided the front was missing something, so I added in these side pieces. And now I'm basically layering things the exact same way, but on the back, I have the front laying next to it, so that way I can try to align these so they will be like the same striped pattern with the same matching lines on the front and back, so there's like some cohesiveness across the garment. The quilting stage of this was pretty straightforward. I started at the top and moved down the shirt. So starting with that big columbine piece and then moving down to the purple, the chartreuse, and then the snow drops or Lily of the Valley, depending on how you see them. And then here while staring at the yoke, I realized I do think the yoke actually needs the trim the pattern calls for. So I'm going to unpick that seam and then I am going to put some trim there. I chose this nice white crochet trim that I felt like matched the general vibe of this piece and, and basted that to the yoke piece before re-sewing everything together. While the bodice was flat, I thought it was the best time to add the zipper. Here I am adding a zipper that goes all the way down except for the last inch. That felt like that worked really well for the mock-up, so I am trying it here. 
And I'm finally putting in the darts here, making sure to pin through all the layers and then get them all folded and correct and ready to be sewn into darts. These are quite bulky darts and it just is what it is. This is a fairly bulky project, so none of that's surprising. Here are these darts actually sewn in and now I'm pressing them. I'm actually quite pleased with my pattern placement with the darts. I was trying to be really careful with this because when I made my one dress, I felt like the darts were not quite in like a good place for the pillowcase motif and here I made sure to pretty much miss any major motif, especially in this case leaving the beautiful parasols up at the top untouched. And now I get to sew the front to the back at both the side seams and the shoulder seams. I probably should have done seam binding for this piece, but I decided to just pink the inner seams. I was feeling just like I didn't want to bind the seams, so I went with ear classic pinking. And then I tried on the shell and I decided I really hated the zipper. And so I dug into my stash and I found a separating zipper that would do the job. I wanted a separating zipper so I could put this on basically like a backwards jacket and not have to like struggle into it, especially with how white this piece is. I have never put in a separating zipper before, so this was kind of a fun little adventure. I basically sewed one side and then the other and you obviously then don't have to go down and around and do all that jazz. So it was a quite pleasant zipper experience. I will note with a separating zipper though, you have to be really careful to make sure everything aligns correctly since you can completely detach your zipper. My goal this day was to finish the entire like main bodice portion. So what I'm doing here is I am hemming the bodice. I'm just using a double fold turn hem. This was definitely bulkier than maybe what would work best here, but I couldn't quite figure out what would actually work best here. So I just, I did what I knew. And to continue to wrap this up, I also put in the facings. So here I will note this pattern did not have instructions, so I was making my best guess and I figured that this would be there and then you'd flip it down and around and then the yoke raw seams would be covered. That was my guess and then that the back facings would go in inside that because again, that would give them a covered edge. This was all a little bit of guesswork, but I think it worked out fine. And then here I am at the end of the day actually hand stitching that down with some slip stitches. I didn't have to be very careful in my stitching because there's so many layers and I just had to make sure to catch the most back layer. Now with a fresh night of sleep, it is time for me to tackle the sleeves. I am most excited and nervous about the sleeves because I need to figure out how to make them symmetrical and also gatherable because these sleeves will be gathered down quite a bit and obviously a really thick amount of fabric doesn't work super well for that. So so I have really carefully set some linens aside that are on the thinner side, such as the grape one you see, and that is what I'm planning on having closest to the sleeve head where I need the gathering to be the nicest. I do feel like the gathering along the wrist can be a little stiffer because that will actually give me more of a bloom shape, but if it's too stiff up in the shoulders, it will give me the 80s shoulder pad look, which is not the vibe I'm going for. So I am working that all out while also arranging these and trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing. Upcycling like this is is just such a learning process and you'll never make the same garment the same way twice. It's always an adventure and a journey and I feel like I learned a lot in this one and had a lot of fun, particularly with these sleeves. Honestly, these sleeves are the funnest thing to lay out because they were so new. Also for the sleeves, I needed to lay out the fabric on the collar. One of the reasons it was handy that I actually cut back some of the fabric on the skirt panels is it left me with lots of these kind of fun scraps that I could play with figuring out how to get some texture and color into something like the cuff. And I had quilted these down much like I had quilted everything else. And then here I am finally basting the gathering stitches in to both the sleeve head and the sleeve cuff. So that way we can get a going on these sleeves. I've also sewn the sides of the sleeves together and I am now cutting some of them. So the cuffs I want to be able to fully open or like unbuckle and button whatever. So I have left like the last inch and a half or two inches still normal, but I am pinking the rest. The cuffs I have to figure out kind of a different treatment since they do have to open and shut. It is really hard to see what I'm doing here since it's such a small strip of fabric, but I am taking that rayon binding that I used and I am binding the seam edges of the hem of the cuff opening. This is, I think, called a Hong Kong seam usually. And I don't use these often when I sew, except for in really, really small use cases like these where I wanna have that really clean seam. Now it's getting time to gather, which is one of my favorite parts. I am gathering these down for the cuff. I had to gather them to their tightest, but I could indeed make them fit into the cuff. So we're in good shape. 
And then after sewing that cuff in, I'm going to sew in the cuff lining. So this is just a plain piece of fabric that's exactly the same size as the cuff that I am sewing right sides together. And then I will flip it up and press it and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. Here it's time for me to hand stitch that cuff down so you can see what I mean. This will envelop all the seams here from the cuff and it also is like a nice light layer on the inside of the cuff since this is kind of a bulky sleeve. And now I get to ease the sleeve into the sleeve head. I am really glad I chose the fabric that I did to be at the very top, that really, really thin grape piece, because this was pretty easy to gather compared to what was at the cuff. So my strategy definitely worked and I wasn't feeling like I had to put my gathers in at the tightest possible to be able to ease it into the sleeve. And then after sewing the sleeve, I am binding it with some cotton bias tape I have laying around that I picked up at an estate sale. I just wanted to use cotton here because the whole inside is cotton and cotton is kind of cozy and comfy. Now it is time for me to play with all the tiny scraps I have left over to figure out the waistband of the skirt. I wanted to figure out the cuffs before doing the skirt waistband because they're basically going to be the same concept except for the skirt waistband is of course longer. So now that I've figured that out, I am just playing mix and match with scraps until I get something I'm happy with. And then of course I will be quilting them as I would normally. After quilting those and cutting those down, I am sewing the waistband to the waist. Again, right sides together. And then I have sewn in the lining to the waistband already. And here what I'm doing is I am basically understitching that. I want to get myself a nice roll into the waistband like inside. So that way when I go to iron it at the end, it won't roll up and do anything weird, which is ultimately what I'm doing right here. I feel like I'm getting a nice clean seam and won't have any of that lining poking out of the waistband, even though it would be okay if it did because it is the same color as everything else but ultimately I would like it to stay nice and hidden. Here I am slip stitching the waistband in place as well as adding my Made by Haley and Spooky label and sewing on all the hooks, snaps, and eyes that I need for this to be a completely finished garment. And with that, we are ready for the reveal. This piece is so dreamy and I can't wait for you to see it. Alrighty, you've seen the reveal. I went back out to the U-Pick flower field that I brought you all to a few weeks ago. I don't know, I'll put that in my link it down below, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. We are going to wrap up this video with my usual cost breakdown. I did break this down into the skirt versus the shirt. So first we'll go through the skirt. The skirt cost me about $158.21 in fabric and linens. The fabric itself, I estimated around $28.21. And then the linens, I think they're probably about 130. I basically averaged it like I paid 
I think $10 per linen. So that's kind of the number I'm trying to go off of here. This is a rough estimation and my linens are big varying in like how expensive they are. Notion Tower for this was cheap because I just needed a zipper, some snaps, and one spool of thread and that was $2.95. For the pattern, the pattern was only $14.89 because I've used this skirt pattern before in my previous linen dress video. So that is the scoop on all that. As far as the labor for this one, I'm gonna go through my labor spiel on the second one. I spent nine hours and 30 minutes working on this skirt. That's actually faster than expected. I think that's probably because I've done the skirt before. I know 10 hours is still kind of wild or almost 10 hours. I'm gonna multiply that nine hours and 30 minutes it's by 32.70, which is the living wage here in Seattle, and that is going to equal a labor cost of $310.65. So that brings the total cost out of my pocket, $486.70. Of course, if you're a business, you're marking this up, likely close to 60%, which puts you well into $1,000 for this skirt. And then for the top, the top definitely took less linens. I need to take 20 off of everything. I might see the numbers wrong, and if that's the case, I'll fix them in my little um, side panel-y thing here. My fabric, I guessed my base fabric would be around $26.59, and then I put the linens that I put on this top at $100, so that is $126.59. And then again, Notions for this was really cheap. We had thread, zipper, and snaps, which I actually miscalculated this, so I'm gonna round up a dollar and it's gonna be $2.73. Um, that should cover the zipper and the snaps. And then the pattern was only $15.31. I've used this pattern before. I guess I could count the cost of a pattern paper, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. So that brings me to a grand total of $144.63. Sorry, that took me a moment because I had to redo all the math that I had already done. So that is the total here. And then the labor for this, the blouse took me much longer, which isn't surprising because figuring out the linens for the blouse was kind of a nightmare. Plus I completely redid the pattern essentially. So this took me 11 hours and 45 minutes. So here's where I'm gonna give you the labor spiel. So $32.70 is a living wage here in Seattle. I think it's something like, it's in the 90 percentage of garment workers that are not paid fair wages. For me, a fair wage is a living wage, which means you can afford to house, clothe, feed, and save yourself. Not quite how I meant it. I think all of us as a working class deserve a living wage. We are the people who work to make the billionaires money. And it's always really interesting to me how many people I find down in my comments who are like, well, that just like doesn't seem fair. And I just wanna say if we pay our garment workers more fairly, we will all get paid more fairly. If you are making under living wage at your important job, and garment making is an important job, but like if you're not making living wage as a nurse or a teacher or any of those things, this is all part of one big problem we are all underpaid because the billionaires are hoarding wealth. I see wanting to uplift garment workers as wanting to uplift the whole working class because we all deserve to make a living wage. We all deserve to be comfortable and I don't think there should be billionaires. So that is my hot take. That is my labor spiel. So we are gonna multiply those 11 hours and 45 minutes by 3270, which again is living wage in Seattle. That brings us to a total of labor of $384.23. So when we add these together, I'm gonna have to do some mental math again. We get $528.86. I did that math rather fast. I'm pretty proud of myself. So yeah, that is the total of the top. I guess I should add these two together. I guess I can add them right here. I was like, I'll just put it in later. And then I remembered I am recording with a calculator essentially. So, okay. So the total of this whole set with labor, and again, not that 60% of profit that you would normally build in is $1,015.56. So needless to say, this was a lot of work. I could definitely not sell this for even that. And that would just cover my labor because we have gotten to the point where we undervalue clothing so much. Let's talk about the set itself. This is the skirt. I actually don't have too much to say that I didn't already say in the video. I did tweak the process of how I made this just a wee bit, just knowing how I did it before. I also did make it bigger and it's definitely more comfortable. And overall, I just think it's cute. I also think I did the zipper better because I knew that this was a trouble spot in the future. So therefore I adapted how I put in my zipper and it definitely turned out way better around the ruffles 
compared to my dress. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I do think I need to move skirt hook a little bit like this way. I think it's peaking more than I would like when that happened today. Oh, the one thing I did want to know is uh, I forgot to hem the bottom of the inner layer. So I will do that after this video. I figured that out while going to the bathroom at work today. I have worn this. It is super comfortable. I even ate a giant sandwich in it and uh, didn't ever get a level of uncomfortable. However, it was a little hot because this is probably not a good 70 degree plus outfit. It is cute and I do love it. And I particularly love this little layer here because I feel like it's almost kind of like a little like tram stamp on my back when I wear it and I just think that's fun. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really pleased and happy with how this turned out and I'm also really happy I did it as two separate garments because now I can put this skirt with so many other things. And as for the blouse, the blouse was definitely more of a learning curve. I'm pretty overall happy with how this turned out. I do like the striping. I feel a little iffy on these. You could call them an applique or whatever that I put on the sides of the front of the blouse. The only reason I feel iffy is I just feel like they're kind of like in a weird spot and bulky. I mean, it's fine. And then the sleeves. I absolutely adore the sleeves. I'm so happy with how the sleeves turned out. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty nervous to make a sleeve like this because I didn't know how I could get all the linens to lay in like a pleasing aesthetic way. And I think I really accomplished that and I'm really proud of that. And I really like that I have lace, like the embroidery detail on the cuff. And yeah, I'm just, I'm shocked at how well this pattern change went because I've never done anything like this before and I didn't plan for it to go well. So the fact that it did go so smoothly is really exciting and I'm just really happy with this. I will note, I am not to be trusted. And today, let's see if we can find it. It's this side. Right here, you can't see and it's fine because I'm sure it will wash out or if not, it will blend with the other stains already on these linens, but um, I got some of that delicious sandwich all over myself on my side somehow, some way. It's a mystery. It was a choice. I was like, a sandwich. I can eat a sandwich without making a mess and having to clean my clothes. I am incorrect. I don't know why I trust myself to eat food. And I mean, I just believe clothes should be worn and I will figure out how to wash them. So I now have the adventure of figuring out how to wash this one already, which was definitely not the goal. I also do want to know, I love the kitty area up on the top. I think it's so cute. I just could not be more pleased. I feel like the placement for the linens on the spouse was spectacular. And last time when I did my one top, for the dress, if you watch that one back, I am not nearly as happy with the placement of linens. So overall, I definitely learned a lot from that project and was able to put it into this project. I don't think these will be the last linen projects you see me do, but I think it will be the last one you see me do this year because I have actually sewn through quite a few of my linens and I don't have as much left as I would want to make something. I do still have the dreams of a balloon sleeve handkerchief shirt, but I have to figure out how I'm doing that. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. This is your reminder that I do have a Ko-Fi where you can buy me a coffee and support this channel. I usually make about $25 a video, which doesn't near cover my supplies and labor. And then of course, as always, you can support me by liking this video and commenting down below. Love to hear what you think. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely stick around. I post every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time and I will see you next week. Bye.